Brothers and sisters, I'm so excited, I'm so grateful to have one of the people, the persons I love the most that I've been knowing for. Who is that? Yeah, it's Somebody's like here? he's sitting right <laughs> here with me. Thank you, Krishna Das, for being in Stockholm, for coming back here. And, uh, you know, yeah. It's just an, an honor that you're here. Happy to be here. Thank you, brother. Thank you for bringing and, me. Yeah. And uh, we we go back nearly 20 years. Is it? Yeah, yeah. nearly 20 Maybe. years. And I just wanted to, to uh, share with you that um, how this journey started for me and mm. the connection that I feel why the connection is so deep with you and with Maharaji and... And uh, 1973, I uh, someone I was in Crete, and someone gave me "Be Here Now," and uh, my heart just exploded. And I didn't know really anyone who'd been to India. I didn't know anything about India, mm. and I just knew I had to go to Maharaji. So I I took the fastest way, uh, you know, train ways, and and came there. And when I came to India, he had left the body, uh -huh. and uh, I ended up with his home, the Dalai Lama, after that instead. So which was not bad, mm. but I loved to, and I feel like, you know, Maharaji and the, the divine and everything just came so strong to me through your music, uh -huh. and I loved to hear you you know hmm. how, how is that for you like and and uh, how did that happen for you with the with the with the music with the mantras and uh, yeah like just to, to hear a little bit about that <sighs> yeah you know um basically i'm just somebody who sleepwalks through life and uh my guru, Neem Kuroli Baba, he just pulls me like this, you know, when, in my sleep. I do all kinds of things in my sleep that people seem to enjoy and that I have to do for myself. And in my sleep, I dream. So I dream a whole story of my life. <clears throat> and uh, I had spent two and a half years with Maharaji in India, 70 to 70 three, and then he sent me home. He said, you have attachment there. You have to go back. I, I remember thinking, what, what, what's he talking about? I said, I left everything in America. I sold my car, sold my guitar, gave my jeans away, my record collection. I gave, you know, I was never going back. And now he says, I have attachment there? What? So now it's how many years later? It says, uh, 47, 48 years later, I know what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything that happened to me between then and now is exactly what he was talking about. Yeah, so then he sent me back to America, and then he left the body uh, before I could get back to him. And uh, that was it. As far as I was concerned, my life was over. Because the only time I had been happy and the only time I had felt loved in that way, was with him. And now he was gone, the body was gone, where am I going to find that? You know, where? What am I going to do? So I just figured it's over. And um, all this dark, destructive, crazy stuff, you know, just came up from out of the shadows in my own heart. And I had a rep time for a long time and then 21 years later I, I walked from one room to another room in my apartment and um, I was struck with a, a, a lightning bolt really and I understood if I did not sing with people if I did not sing with people I would never be able to clean out these dark shadows in my own heart you know, 
I just knew it. It, it was, and uh, I had to decide whether I wanted to live or die. And I, I guess I wanted to live because I'm still here. So I started singing with people after a while. And really, very simply, to save myself, to save my ass. That's why I sing today. Same reason. Now, I can see that my ass has gotten a little bigger. <laughs> and now it seems to include a lot of people, you know. But that's not my doing, you know. I'm only singing to my guru. I'm singing to that love. I'm singing to that presence within me uh, and trying to move more deeply into that. It doesn't matter who's in the room or who's not in the room. And I think because I share this practice that way, I think people find their own way into it, you know. They find, they feel something. And I, on the other hand, I really feel like he's transmitting, you know. I mean, people say, oh, I had this dream, I had this experience in my heart. Great. I mean, what do I have to do with it? I'm just singing. He's doing everything else, you know. You're, he's inside of you, it's happening. I don't have anything to do with that, except for the fact that I'm providing a, a medium for it to happen, you know. So it's just like that, and... This is what he wants me to be doing, and so I'm doing it the best I can. When he changes the program, maybe I'll know, maybe I won't know. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe uh, I figure I'll just keep singing until I drop, or until somebody has to carry me around, uh, which is not too far away, I don't think. <laughs> That's the feeling I have a lot. Like It's like if you're drunk with this, it's like you, it's no choice. Mm -hmm. It just has to be, be done. Yeah. Can can you speak a little bit about that? That is unspeakable, like what your heart is experiencing when you, with his grace, with mm -hmm. singing a little bit. What what is it? What, how can you put words to that? What is transmitted? Well, I can't. All I can say is he's transmitting himself, which is not a person. You know. As, He's not, someone once wrote, Maharaj is nothing special, but his body fills the universe. So what he's, he's transmitting that presence, divine presence uh, to people. And what I experience simply is that I feel I'm with him more deeply when I sing. So I try to sing as much as I can. And... Uh, I sing at home now, whereas many years ago I didn't sing at home. When I was alone, the darkness, the unhappiness, the, the habits, the moping around, you know, was maybe a little stronger than it is now. So now I'm, when I'm home, I, sometimes I sing. And I, I can do that? Wow. You know, because really my own bullshit never allowed me to be happy in, when I was on my own. So the chanting for me is very deep and very transformative and very, really natural. It was, you know, I'm, I'm in the water about this high. When I sing, I stay right here. When I don't sing, I'm, oh, you know, so I got to keep singing. It keeps me right there. And, uh, but that's the way he, the way, see, my, my path is not necessarily... It's it's surrender to the guru. It's devotion to the guru. And now these days, gurus have a pretty bad name, you know, because of all the bullshit that's going on. But those people are not gurus. They're assholes who are acting like gurus. They're just worldly, hungry, desire-ridden, desire-driven people who are acting like something in order to get something they want. And they're using other people. That has nothing to do with what a guru is. Uh, what is the guru? I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck a guru yeah. is, but I know what it isn't. Hey, you know? I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So, yeah. uh, you know, one thing is you, when you meet somebody who doesn't want anything, doesn't want anything, doesn't even want you to be there, doesn't need you to be there. If you're there, it's because it happened that you got there. Uh, there's no agenda. 
I love that. Yeah, there's no agenda. Mm. Not even an agenda of waking you up. Mm. Because there's no one in there to be deciding whether you should wake up or not. There's nobody, uh, you know, a guru is, is guru, God, and self, with a capital S, are not different. All the books say that, and they have, I can't believe they're actually right. It's, we, but in the West, oh man, in the West we have nothing but neurosis, you know, and it takes over everything immediately. And we project it onto everything. So a guru must be some guy who's going to help me. But a guru is not something outside of you. Is your own true nature. Oh, yeah, he's my own true nature. Even that, is you putting a, a, a label on it. It's not that. They don't even, they're only love, they're only truth, they're only bliss and happiness and joy. There's nobody in there doing anything. What it However, so one thing, but however, Ramana Maharshi says really clearly that with an enlightened being, the Shakti around that being performs all kinds of actions in, in uh, relation to the beings that come. But that, but that the being himself or herself doesn't do anything. But things happen because they don't do anything, because they're a pure empty channel, full channel to, the, to, to reality. So when I sing, I move deeper into that. So It's like a responding just happening in the moment, like, uh, you know, with, I love that, that just, it's just a responding of what's happening mm -hmm. in the moment. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, And through that, like thy will is coming through. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. That's for mm -hmm. me, you know, what's coming through so much in in your music. Why I love to, for me, for example, as an organizer, you know, after all these years, I just love to bring people together because something happens when we are together. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time I picked you up, you know, like because. I heard your music, and we're talking maybe 18 years ago, and, mm -hmm. and it was not. Nobody was singing in Sweden. Nobody I had br brought me ten and Deva Pramali 25 years ago. We were 30 people mm. basically in my living room. Mm -hmm. And they were coming in a bus. And when you came in, nobody really knew. I had bought your CDs and given out to, to friends mm -hmm. just to, to, to tell them, this is where my heart is. Like, listen to this. Mm. And I gave it to people who was therapists and like this because they should play it in the room where there were many people. Mm. And then I... I had not sold many tickets when you came. And I remember, you know, I was driving in the car and I said to you, Katie, I'm sorry, I have not sold so many tickets because people <laughs> don't know who you are. <laughs> and you responded to me, I play to God. I don't care, you know, I play to God. And for me, because I do this, I'm here as a servant to God, mm -hmm. to the divine, to whatever, I don't know what, what it is. And when you said that, it just brought tears to me because I knew that we were coming from the same place. Mm. The only, and in the evening, 300 people just came oh. on the door. <laughs> they came like rats, like on the flute. <laughs> you know, they, they just came walking. And, ah, uh, far out. Yeah. So yeah. something is... Uh, and yeah, something is coming through, which is... I love to... You know, something is with the heart yeah and i can you tell me a little bit how you see the heart what the heart is for you well you know we have this longing to for something we don't even know what it is because what it is no words can describe what it is but we have this longing to be fulfilled to be home somehow to find home again you know and that longing is what saves us it also ruins our lives because nothing will ever be enough all the conventional ideas of happiness and satisfaction they don't last but the longing outlives all those and you're left with that and so the more we follow that longing of our hearts 
the more we move in that direction of fulfillment, of oneness, you know. Uh, longing is big time stuff. And that's really my only qualification, to tell you the truth. I really don't have, I'm not the best singer. I'm not even a great musician in any way. Uh, I can barely drag my ass around. Uh, so there's nothing that I do that's better than anybody except the longing. That's pretty severe, you know, and really intense. And it leaves me with a very uh, high intolerance for pain. When something hurts, I know it's because I'm not in the right place. And so it drives me further to find that. Uh, I have a low, I mean, a low tolerance for suffering. I don't like it. And, of course, there's a lot of subtleties about that which we won't get into, but the idea is that that longing keeps pulling us in life, dragging us towards our true nature, you know. And that's what the chanting does for me, you know. It's the names. They say in India that the name and what is named are actually not different. But we don't experience that. We think we're doing something and that what we're calling out to is something else. But that's not the case. That's what they say. So, and Maharaj used to say, go on, sing your lying Ram Ram. Go on, keep, you know, one of these days you'll get it right once, and then the real Ram will come. So we're just, we're faking it, you know, but we're doing a good job of faking it, and we're moving in the right direction. He said, keep singing. He didn't say, don't sing. He said, if you don't sing, if you don't take the name, if you don't practice, then nothing will happen. So then what? So he said, do it when you feel good, do it when you feel bad, do it when you're angry, do it when you're sad, do it. And he, keep doing, because if you don't, if you don't plant the seeds for, uh, for opening, they won't, you won't, it won't happen. You can't create it in your mind. You have to plant the seeds for it by your own actions. It's not something you can think yourself into. And nor can you think yourself out of a prison that's made of thought. Every thought is the prison. Your thinking is the prison. You can't think yourself out of that. We have to, something has to be generated that's beyond thought, beyond emotion. And that's what we're doing when we chant. He said, he dropped his beads. I love that. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it's like we are walking each other home and uh, walking ourselves home when we do that, mm -hmm. when we chant, when we, that's what, that seems like the only free will we have, you know, to, to do that. Mm, it seems like free will, but. Yeah, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> it itself is a result of seeds we've already planted. Yeah. Otherwise we wouldn't be interested in these things. I feel so grateful and lucky, you know, to have this birth and to to have that longing, you know, you were talking about. I yeah. mean, it's so rare mm. to have that. It's easy to take it for granted, but it's such a... Yeah. Oh. We forget all the time. Yeah, We spend our whole lives living in dreamland. Mm. And uh, we think uh, yeah. just pushing stuff around over here in dreamland, making a house in dreamland buying a car, getting a girlfriend, doing all kinds of things in dreamland, and we forget to look. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the practice of repetition of the name is remembering, remembering and planting seeds. Mm -hmm. I love that, remembering, you know. That's uh, yeah, over and over and over again. That's what... I mean, that's what the meditation is. I mean, it's like over and over again, yeah. connecting with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is the singing your meditation, or do you have any other ways that you connect with that? The singing is my main formal practice, I guess you could say. But there's all kinds of other things that happen mm -hmm. in the course of a life. Once again, it's not the particular practice, it's the, it's the concept. 
that everything that's happening is my guru's grace to me. Now, that's easy to accept when it's pleasant, you know. It's not so easy to accept when it's not very pleasant. And, uh, but that's the idea of surrender, you know. Surrender is the goal. It's not, it's not something you do. You don't surrender. You don't... It, surrender happens when that grace occurs and you, you recognize reality, you know. That's surrender. So each of us has our own version of that playing out inside of us. So, uh, but my version is, is guru devotion, you know, because the guru is what wakes you up when you're asleep. And uh, he has to shake you a lot, you know, to get you to wake up. But they do what they have to do. The real gurus do what they have to do to get you to wake up. It's something that happens naturally. Also, we want that, and we want to wake up. But we forget, and we just keep creating more nonsense karmas in our lives, you know, just... I felt many times, you know, like in my life that, for example, I was in a huge car accident where I basically was leaving the body for 10 days. Mm. And it was because I'd gone so astray and I needed to be really, really shaken. Mm. I just needed to, it was not, a little hit was not enough. Mm. I just needed to be, you know, really hit hard. And mm. uh, and it's easy to talk in that way, but that's a knowing in myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, to trust that knowing mm -hmm. is like, um, yeah. Yeah. Most people don't pay attention, you know. They, unfortunately, they don't recognize what's possible in life, where we're headed, you know, to some degree. And so suffering happens for no reason. It, it doesn't have any effect except more, create more suffering. It's like we're running into the tiger's mouth. <clears throat> yeah. It all depends how you run into the tiger's mouth. You know, when Buddha was still a bodhisattva, you know, he... He saw a tigress and her cubs, and she was so weak she couldn't get food. He he just gave her about his body, you know. He fed them. You know, that's different than than yeah. what we do. That's different. <laughs> that's a different <laughs> level of compassion. Yeah, no? exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's you know, Maharaji didn't tell us to do spiritual practice. He really didn't encourage us to think about doing things that was going to save ourselves. When we asked him, how do we find God, he said, you know, uh, feed people. What? You know, how do you raise kundalini? Feed people. How do you find God? Serve people. We just looked at him like he was crazy. Like, you know, what are you talking about? People? What do they have to do with anything? What about me? Well, that was the whole point. He never encouraged us to think about me. Think about others. When he told us to meditate like Christ, we said, well, how did he meditate? He said... He lost himself in love, and he never thought of himself. That's why he said, uh, that's why he, uh, when I was going to kill myself in India, I was having a complete nervous breakdown. He looked at me and said, what are you going to do, jump in the river? Ha! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he didn't seem to be too worried, you know. He said, you can't die. Yeah. The worldly people don't die. So only Jesus died the real death. What? Why? Because he never thought of himself. That's the real death. The real death is when me and doesn't even arise as a concept in you anymore. But that's the end of karmas. We're not anywhere close. We just keep creating more me's every day. Every minute of every day. Me, 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 me. All day long. The movie of me goes on and on and on. We write it. We produce it. We direct it. We, t we play all the parts because I don't know who you are. I mean... I got my version of you in my movie, so I'm playing your part. And then we write reviews that we read and get more depressed. And there's no end to it. It's not possible to stop. You can't stop thinking. You can't stop imagining and, and projecting. And the only thing you can do is plant seeds of waking up, plant seeds of love. 
that will grow all the time at their own rate. You can't force it. And then you see, well, you know, if you keep tre treating everybody else like a piece of shit, uh, that doesn't seem to help. So you have to find a way to f see people for who, what they are and have some awareness of their suffering and recognize that the things that happen that cause me pain, that it looks like you did to me, aren't, it's not what it is at all. You're acting out of your own suffering. You're not really aiming at me because you don't know me. You might be aiming at your projection of me, which I'm only too happy to accept and get angry and beat you up. But that's not, you know? So when you notice that people, when you notice that you can't do anything about your own pain, and then you recognize, well, maybe that guy can't either. He's as helpless as I am, you know. I shouldn't. How can I be mad at him? You know, there. You know, how can I, when there's when there's no difference between us, I'm not better than him, or her. So you recognize that everybody's doing it to everybody all the time, and then you say, okay, maybe I don't have to do that all the time, and you start noticing things like that. And then compassion arises because there are people who do nothing but cause pain to themselves and others. And they have no, jo no voice, no vote. No, there's no awareness of what's going on. And that, if that doesn't break your heart, you know, what's gonna, you know? So it's tricky. You know, and... Uh, in, in Vajrayana Buddhism, they talk about, and Mahayana Buddhism, they talk about uh, cultivating compassion. We must cultivate caring for people. It doesn't, it does come naturally, but we are so unnatural that it's all blocked right now. So you have, you cultivate it, you start thinking about it, and then you, you kind of un, Little by little, it goes deeper, and you start to understand what it might mean in your life and in others' lives if we were more compassionate, more kind. So the repetition of the name, or these names of God, so to speak, as if God is somewhere else, which is not, these names of our own true nature, when we repeat these names, we're planting seeds, we're cultivating all those qualities that we need to have in order to become a good human being. You know, because that's what it's about. We're not living on some other planet. This is it. You know, and if we don't, this is where we get our, our chance to get it right here. Yeah, it's really a sacred birth. It's amazing to live in this time today. I mean, I'm just thinking what I've seen, the shift in 50 years. I mean, my journey has been like 50 years now of responding to the longing and uh, being a seeker or whatever you, you want to call it but like from the meeting of his holiness in dharmsala and uh, then studying with lama yeshi and uh, uh, mm. there was just you know like this deep deep knowing that uh, may all beings be happy may all beings be peaceful may all beings be free and uh, uh, knowing that uh, there is only one here, and uh, and from coming from that place, and and that's what I feel a lot. What you're talking about, and what, what that's the it's it's what we do in all the times that we think we're not practicing. That really is the ground for the rest of our lives. You know, people can do practice, they can do hours of practice every day. What they do the rest of the time is what really, it, it counts just as much, if not more. But with the practice of the name and the repetition of the name, it reverberates through your being and it keeps going through the day on some level and little by little you become more aware of it. it eventually it starts to be like home. For, it starts to feel like you're, you're home at ease. In the, in the flow of the name, or that flow of awareness, or the flow of grace that's within us. And uh, when you're at home, you're at ease, you know, and you, you, you create less suffering uh, than you might if you were uh, not at home, in your heart, in one's own heart. 
in some way I feel I don't like to ask you about it. Sometimes I'm I'm grateful to feelings and emotions because they show me when I'm off. Mm -hmm. The suffering actually is they show me that okay, I'm I need to to get on track again. And if I didn't have that, I could be so, you know go asleep, which I do a yeah, lot. Sure. But um, yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been I spent a lot of time with Ram Das for the last you know how many years? Eighty and uh, sixty-eight. And uh, the stroke that he had twenty years ago, you know, he he understands that uh, that saved him really. Uh, he had a a shell of um, you know, deep stuff that it was. I don't know if he was going to make it. He doesn't know if he was going to make it. But the stroke forced him to overcome that stuff, you know, uh, and to find a way to surrender con constantly and accept everything that's happening without uh, reacting. And he's in terrible pain, you know. He's but he never talks about it. He never uses it to buy attention or he's he's he really has overcome he's really found a deep humility and a deep love it's really a beautiful thing i tease him all the time i say you finally become who we thought you were 40 years ago mm -hmm. and he laughs ha ha you know mm -hmm. but it's just beautiful to see mm -hmm. you know beautiful to see somebody mm -hmm. who's it's become so real, really. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. I'm so grateful to him, what he meant for for Western Dharma and for yeah. what happened. I mean, I mean yeah. it's like unbelievable uh, what... How is he doing now in, in the... You know, it's... It, his space, uh, where, you know, where is he at in himself and like this? What's he, transmitting through him? Yeah, yeah, he's... I told you, he's really in a beautiful space. He's really uh, very open and very... His heart is very unprotected, very beautiful. Very much... Very deep, loving space. And... Uh, yeah. It's wonderful to be around them. We go back a long way. Mm. And it all started because he wanted to find out what LSD was. He knew it had changed his life, but nobody could say what it is. What was it actually? What it was actually doing? So he goes to India, brings a bunch of acid with him, gives it to this one, gives it to that one. Some people like it, some people don't like it. And then uh, he met Maharaji. So the first thing that happened was that, you know, they had driven from Nepal all the way down to uh, find Maharaji near uh, Nanital area in India. And uh, the night before, Ramdas had been out under the stars. He had been on his way to the outhouse on the way, about halfway there. And uh, they stopped at someone's house and. He goes out under the stars, and it's beautiful stars. And his mother had died some months before, and he was remembering his mother, you know, under the stars and feeling her presence and very much love. Huh? Then he went to the bathroom and went to sleep. The next day, he, they met Maharaji. It's, I mean, it's a complicated, long story, but then Maharaji just looked at him and said, you were out under the stars? Yeah. You were thinking about your mother? Yeah. She died recently. Yeah. She got very big here before she died. Yeah. And then he said in English, which is a language he's supposed to not understand, he said spleen in English. And she died of cancer of the spleen. And she got very big here before she died. When he said spleen, Ramdas just completely fell apart. He broke down crying, and he was home. It wasn't whatever. That's how Maharaji did things. That was how he taught. He didn't give lectures. He didn't write books. He didn't initiate people other than what that was initiation. You know, that's what he did. 
from that, everything, all this Western Dharma, so much of it has arrived. So the next day, he says to Ramdas, said, you have some medicine? So Ramdas thought he meant aspirin. So he takes some aspirin. He said, nay, nay, the yogi medicine, he says. So he must mean acid. So he takes some acid out, and throws it all in his mouth. Four hits, enough, enough acid to put a horse on the moon. <laughs> and they sat around all day, nothing happened. And that, for Ramdas, that was really big because it meant he was beyond acid. Couldn't affect him. So, funny part of the story is this. When Ramdas got back to America and told that story, there were people who said, Oh, come on. He hustled you. He probably threw it over his shoulder. Nobody could take that much acid. So, <clears throat> Ramdas didn't really believe that. He thought that he had to, but you know, maybe he had this much doubt. Well, maybe, you know, ah, no, ah, maybe, ah, no, this much. So two years later, he's back in India, and now I'm already there. I went, after he came back from India, after a year and a half or so, I went to India to be with Maharaji. And then after about three months, he showed up again. And then we were with Maharaji in Brindavan, uh, sitting with Maharaji. And Maharaji looks around and said, last time you were here, you gave me medicine? Yes. Oh, did I take it? And I said, I think so, yeah. Oh, you got any more? Yeah, give it to me. So Maharaji knew that Ramdas had some doubt. So Ramdas, once again, puts the acid out like this on his hand. Maharaji took it, he went like this. Wow. And wow. he looks right at Ramdas. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. And then he's can I drink water? Cold water? Hot water? Bring some water. He drank some water. And then he, you know, he always wore a blanket. So he took his blanket, he put it over his head, and then he goes, <laughs> <laughs> like this. And Ramdas turned purple. He thought, oh, I've killed my guru. He didn't take it last time. Mm. He was trying to prove to me he mm. could do it. And now look what I've done. I've killed. The minute he had that thought, Maharaj just, mm. I'm happy. This is, he said, yogis have known about this for thousands of years. Mm. Nothing. For a yogi, no, no poison can affect him. Amazing. Etc. So, Amazing. So the, that's the thing. So <clears throat> he showed Ramdas that whatever it is, it is beyond that, beyond acid, beyond anything that acid can do. But Ramdas's surrender and the opening of his heart happened before that. So everything came from that. It wasn't that the acid thing came before, you know, it came after Ramdas had opened up. And then Maharaji said, come on, this is, this is no big deal. In fact, he told people, to, he told some people, some, some friend's father came to India to be with him. He said, take your father to Banaras and give him the yogi medicine. <laughs> <laughs> His whole life changed. <laughs> he said, it's good for beginners. So there you go. So, but the thing that, you know, the, the, the opening of the heart, the, 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 the falling apart of all the, the, the walls we put around our, our hearts, the destruction of all those walls, at least temporarily, is what changed everything for Ramdas. And so much came from that. And he, yeah. I love that opening of the heart. Mm. That is so beautiful, and and uh, that all all knowing, you know, it just feels like that omnipresence uh, of no time, no space. Just uh, yeah. when you talk about Maharaji and and the Ramdas like that, it just feels like this place that. We, we are sitting in where nothing really is happening and everything is happening. Mm. Mm. Hanuman is called Trikalavesham, the dweller in the three times, past, future, and present. And Maharaj is considered to be, uh, you know, an incarnation of Hanuman himself. So he's in the past, he's in the present, and he's in the future. 
There's no, no time. <clears throat> and Krishna says in the Gita, I come as time. When he's showing Arjuna his universal form, I come as time, the great destroyer. All beings enter into me and come out of me constantly in a cyclic flow. And he, as time, there is no present, there's no past or future. It's always present moment because time is now you know later is an idea and that's in future is an idea but now is now that's I come I come as time and from here all beings coming in and all the great beings that's where they are they're here always here we're the ones who aren't here you know they're here they're always here there's nowhere they could go we are not here <laughs> Beautiful. So, what a grace to hear about this and talk about this. It's like just puts me in a in such a deep place. Just hearing, you know, you talking about this, remembering, reminding, and uh, when when two come together and just want to speak thy name, something happens or sing it, you know, something just, it's just always waiting to come here. I feel drunk. I feel complete. I feel deep, deep gratitude and uh, gratefulness. And uh, yeah, the heart is big, big, big. And so I just want to thank you so much. Love you so much, brother, for, you know, for what you're doing and for your service and for brings me tears when I think about uh, that um, and also knowing that it's nobody doing it and uh, and uh, no choice but anyway I just want to say that the uh, deep deep gratitude to you so thank you thank you Krishna Das thank you okay and tonight we're going to sing. We're going to do, the, do a big chanting with many, many friends here in Stockholm. So, much love. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Would it be okay for you just to do a little completion of it and give a little whatever you feel is coming through mm -hmm. to the friends mm -hmm. who are seeing this? Bandang Guru Padakanja Krupa Sindhu Nararupa Hari Mahamo Tamapunja Jasu Bachana Rabhikara Nikara Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Enamaha. Guru Madhya Stita Mata, Matri Madhya Stito Guru, Guru Mata Namaste Stu, Matri Guru Namamya. Dhyana mulam guru murti, puja mulam guru padam, moksh mantra mulam guru akyam, moksha mulam guru kripa. Om Shri 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 Guru Vibhavanamah.